Sometimes the best way to learn something is by example. So I thought I would share a short story that I wrote a couple of years ago and go through it and just kind of give you some tips on what to do and what not to do. You have 10 seconds before your world ends, I told the man at the end of my sword. You want to start out with something that grabs reader's attention right away. That first sentence is super important. This is true in novels. This is also true for short stories as well. You won't get people to keep reading if they're not interested right away. Now with this one, I kind of cheated because I used a writing prompt and the writing prompt was um, the dialogue you have 10 seconds before your world ends. So that's where writing prompts can come in handy because then you've got your first sentence. Um, and also you'll notice I am writing in first person and you'll notice through the story I never gave the gender of the character. Um, so when you're first writing short stories you may just want to go ahead and write in third person. It makes it a lot easier to um, get the gender across that way you're not struggling trying to figure out a way to put it in there without taking up too many words. How generous of you. The man gave a crooked smile. I took you for the sort of person to kill immediately. What are the ten seconds for? To say my prayers? Don't be funny, I snapped. Tell me where you hid it. Hid what? He arched an eyebrow. The chalice, I snarled. I know you have it. This part introduces what the character wants. Because you don't have many words, you want it to be something that they can get pretty quickly. This means starting the story before they either succeed in getting what they want or fail in getting what they want. If this were a short story, I would have started out with the protagonist first noticing that the chalice was missing or perhaps when the king commissioned him to go find this chalice. There would have been a long cat and mouse game between the protagonist and uh, this thief and then there would have been a big sword fight, like there would have been all these events that lead up to this moment. But because this is a short story, I start right at the moment with the protagonist holding the thief at sword point. You always want to start a short story right before it ends. Search me. He held out his hands. I'm not wasting my time. You wouldn't keep it on you. You're not that much of an imbecile. I don't know. The man said in mock consideration. Maybe you've overestimated my intelligence. Enough! I pressed the tip of my sword to his chest. All I want is the chalice. I'll spare your life if you tell me where it is. Spare my life and put me in chains. I think I'd rather die than spend my life in the castle dungeon. I think I can manage that request, I said with a stiff smile, after you tell me where the chalice is. And what are you going to do with it? Return it to the king. I looked him in his eyes and said coolly, I know where my loyalty lies. Too bad it's in the wrong place. With one quick movement, I made a gash in his arm and brought the sword back to his chest. It wasn't a deep wound, just enough to let him know that I meant business. He hissed in surprise. Do not insult the king, I told him icily. He glared at me through unruly brown hair that hung in his face. A quick description is all you need for a story this short. You don't need to go into a lot of detail about what characters look like. It takes away from the action that's going on in the story and readers really aren't going to be with these characters long enough to care. Although you can give a little more description than this, in this story I focus on action and snappy dialogue. You say you know where your loyalty lies, he said, all cockiness gone from his voice. His words were low and deliberate. Well, I do too. And it isn't with the king. It's with the people. You've chosen foolishly. Foolishly. His dark eyes flashed. It isn't foolish to care about those who are not in a position of power, to care about those who are not kings but paupers. The chalice should be shared with the rest of the land. This gives enough information about why the thief stole the chalice without bogging the story down with too much detail. If this were a novel, I would have went into um, the state of the country, why it's the king's fault, and how the chalice could help with that. Maybe as the protagonist was chasing the thief, he would have come across people in dire situations. He would have seen things that he'd never seen before, and he would have started to feel just a little bit of pity for the people that could be helped with this chalice. But for a short story, a few lines is all you need. And you thought stealing is the best way to do that? I let out a breath in disgust. However noble your intentions, it is still the king's. 
He can use it in whatever way he chooses. He uses it for his own gain. The chalice has the power to feed those who are starving. It could save lives, but all the king can use it for is his own luxury. He keeps it locked up so it can increase his wealth while people die. I will not hear any more about the king, I said through clenched teeth. It is not up to us to judge what he does with his own possessions. The man pursed his lips as if forcing words in. I continued, you can either take me to the chalice now or I can take you to the dungeon and they'll make you tell. These lines show the character of both the protagonist and the thief. The thief is a Robin Hood sort who feels responsible for helping the people for making wrongs right, while the protagonist is duty bound to the king and he feels that it's his responsibility to take care of anyone who crosses him. There was silence for a moment. Then the man spoke, I'll show you. I held the sword to his back as he led me through the woods. He stopped a few feet away from a hollowed out log. It's in there, he said, looking dejected. I could almost feel sorry for him, but a thief was a thief, no matter their reason. I walked toward the log. Suddenly, I was pulled from my feet. I dropped my sword. A rope around my ankle suspended me in air from the tree. The man gave me a grin and put his hand into his jacket. It seems I've had this with me the whole time, he said, pulling out the chalice in mock surprise. I watched his upside down form walk away with the power to transform a kingdom. And the moment that your character gets, or in this case, fails to get what they want. In a novel, I'd go on about how the protagonist realizes that he really doesn't feel that bad that the, the thief got away with the chalice. Um, it would go on to, uh, he'd start questioning why he felt that way. Maybe he'd realize that after seeing people of the kingdom firsthand, he empathizes with them. He would go on to have the protagonist find the thief and help him, or perhaps um, continue to pretend to be looking for him while feeding the king false information. Short stories are almost like chapters in a book. There is a lot that took place before the story began and there's a lot that could take place after but it does need to stand on its own. The beginning introduces both characters and shows what they want then in the middle they have a moment of struggle where they each try to obtain what they want and then there's a clear ending where one of them wins. And remember don't go into a lot of backstory. Notice I never explain how the thief got the chalice in the first place. Hopefully this little walkthrough of a short story will help you to be able to write your own. I wish you luck and I'll see you next time. So you might have noticed that this video is a lot clearer than the other videos that I've been filming and that is because I'm not using my laptop camera, I'm using this fancy HD camera that my boyfriend got me. So I just wanted to say thank you. I love this camera. It looks so much better and I'm sure everyone watching thanks you too. So thanks boyfriend who will remain anonymous and nameless. <laughs>